You know, sometimes it's really obvious that a game was developed in Japan. Back in the 90s, a large portion of the most prominent video games were made by Japanese developers. You could generally sort of tell when a game was Japanese developed, but sometimes you could really tell, and that was the case with Dynamite Eddie. Lucky for us, these games usually meant you'd be getting two important things, creativity and quality. That's definitely the case with this game. Not only was this game made by Japanese developers in the 90s, it was made by Treasure. And this might just be their most underappreciated game as it doesn't get mentioned as often as some of their more famous games. They're well known for making action games and shooters, and Dynamite Hetty doesn't really fall into either category as this is pretty much just a mascot platformer. Although, there is a lengthy shooter stage later on in the game. Alright, so the character himself. He's a puppet with a detachable head, so that's kind of different, right? Although, I gotta say that Sega had a tendency to have platformer mascots who use their heads and or face to attack their enemies. The premise of Dynamite Heady really sticks out though. Like I said, he's a puppet and the game is set up like a performance, with the acts making up the different levels that you go through. Now, normally the story for games like this isn't very important, and to a large extent that's true here. In this case, the way the story contributes to the game is in how it adds to the level design, with so many creative things going on that happen around the idea that the game is a play, with the scene constantly changing, whether it be in the background or foreground. Another nice little touch that I enjoy is the way your health meter is handled. There's a stage light in the top corner that changes from green, to yellow, to orange, to red, to black, and then you die. Or whatever it is that happens to puppets. However, the coolest part of the game in my opinion, and really its defining feature, would have to be the different heads that you can find that serve as power-ups. These include a wide range of abilities, most of which are pretty helpful. There's a couple you'll want to avoid, like the one that makes you fall asleep. A lot of them do some pretty cool stuff though. One of them gives you multiple heads, which serves almost like a spread shot. Then you've got some other weird stuff, like a vacuum head that you can use to suck up special items that are out of reach. Certain heads are generally available near certain spots of the level where they're useful. So the stages are designed in a clever way in that regard, with the power-ups tying into how you maneuver through them and what you're able to do. I gotta mention the bonus stages as well, because there's something that I personally enjoy a lot. It's this basketball minigame that I always find to be a fun break in the action. However, not everybody likes these minigames, since they're such a change of pace and can last for a long time. But if you are one of those people, there's a very simple solution to this. You can just skip the bonus stages. I always play these stages though. I mean, heck, they taught me how to play basketball better in real life. Shoot with your head. But what am I missing out on if I skip the bonus stages, you may be asking? Well, completing four out of the six bonus stages will give you a password you need to access an extra stage at the end of the game. Again, there's a solution for this. Just look up what the code is online. I won't tell anybody you did it and nobody will care, so just do it if you want to. Plus, the game's length is doing just fine without adding any extra stage anyways. This is probably one of the longest 16-bit platformers I've ever played. It's got 9 acts, and it feels like it goes on for a long time. So you'll need a large chunk of time if you want to try to sit down and beat the whole thing. But even if you just play through a few of the stages, it's a lot of fun. I really like the boss battles in this game. There is some really unique stuff going on, and this is a staple of the developer treasure. They like to put lots of boss battles into their games, and while Dynamite Hetty may not have as many compared to some other treasure games, there are still a lot of them and they're paced out so that you feel like you're constantly running into another one, and they're all very memorable. If you're interested in checking out the original Japanese version of the game, there are a ton of differences compared to the version that was released in the US. You can tell the team of people tasked with localizing the game put a lot of work into this. There's some really nice changes that I feel benefit the US version, like the names of each level, which are all parodies of music and movie names. 
I feel like fans of the console seem to know about this game, but the larger video game community often does not. For this week's question, I'm simply going to ask if you've played this game before, and if so, what do you think of it? So as always, leave a comment with your answer, and I will see you in the next video.